Hello everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data of an XCPNG Xan Cloud Platform Next Generation virtual machine from a mirrored RAID 1. XCPNG is a Linux distribution with a pre-configured Xan hypervisor and a ready-to-use Xan API project. XCPNG stands for Xan Cloud Platform Next Gen. The main goal of this project is to provide a simple way to deploy infrastructure based on virtual machines using XAN as a hypervisor and a powerful XAN IP to offer ready-made solutions. XCPNG is compatible with most servers, and that is why it enjoys great popularity. However, just like any other hypervisor, there may be factors that cause loss of access to the virtual machine, both as a result of a system error or a server breakdown. As a result, you won't be able to restore access to the virtual machine data without resorting to third-party software tools. And in today's video, I'll show you how to extract files of a virtual machine stored in a RAID array that can't be accessed in a conventional way and do it with a good data recovery utility, which is Hetman RAID Recovery. As for the ready-made XAN distribution, the easiest way to deploy XCPNG is to use an ISO image available on the project's website. The installation of XCP isn't much different from the installation of XAN Hypervisor. In our channel, we have a very detailed video about installing a XAN Hypervisor. I will give the link in the description. The only difference is that I'm going to install the system onto a mirrored RAID. During the installation, you need to specify the disks and use them to build an array. As to creating virtual machines, it is uh, also very similar to how we do it with Xen Hypervisor. To manage virtual machines, we will use XCP Center. The program has an interface similar to Xen Center. You can learn more about creating a virtual machine by watching a video about Xen Hypervisor. Since this process is absolutely identical, I am not going to focus on that, but switch to the recovery aspects instead. On this hypervisor, I have configured two virtual machines, one with Windows 10 and another with Linux Ubuntu. I'll show you how to extract data from each of them. If nothing happens when booting a virtual machine, if it displays an error that cannot be fixed, or if there is a hardware failure or system error in the work of your server, whatever the reason, but you can't boot the virtual machine. Use a specialized data recovery tool, Hetman RAID Recovery. It supports recovery from all popular RAID types and from virtual disks of various hypervisor, including XCP. By default, XCPNG uses LVM storage for its virtual machines. This storage method has quite a lot of advantages if compared with VHD files, but sometimes you need to use the file-based storage mode like in VMware ESX, and it may also create additional difficulties for the recovery process. In my case, uh, this system is based on the mirrored RAID, which makes recovery even more complicated. To begin the recovery process, take the disks out of the server and connect them to the motherboard of a Windows computer. If your motherboard lacks SATA ports or power connectors to use all the disks you need, you can add adapters or expansion cards to solve the issue, and you can see them on the screen right now. When you connect the physical disks which used to make up the RAID where virtual machine files are stored, Hetman RAID Recovery will immediately display virtual machine disks and their size. If you stored a lot of virtual machines on your hypervisor and it's difficult to distinguish between them, there are a few commands to help you. You can do it as long as the server is operable. To see which virtual disks belong to a specific virtual machine, you should run some commands on the server to find the UUID universal unique identifier of the virtual machine, the UUID of its disk, and the UUID of its SR, universal unique identifier of the storage repository. To do that, connect to the server by SSH and type the first command. As a result, you found the virtual machine's UUID. Here is the identifier of the virtual machine with Windows 10 and Linux. Now you can use this identifier to view the connected disks with the help of this command. In the end, the virtual machine UUID is given.
As a result, you get the virtual disk UUID, which in its turn can be used to find the storage repository UUID. Now that we have the repository identifier, it's easy to understand to which virtual machine specific disks belong, and you will be able to identify those disks in the data recovery utility. Alright, now we have taken the disks out of the server and connected them to a Windows computer. Download, install and start Hetman RAID Recovery. The program has built the RAID system where virtual machine files are stored. Below, you can see the information it managed to identify. A little lower, under the RAID, all virtual machine disks are displayed. If it's difficult to understand which of them you need, find it by its identifier. In my case, there are only two virtual machines. For starters, let's scan the Windows virtual machine disk. Right-click on the disk and select Open. Select the scan type, start with Fast Scan. If the Fast Scan can't find the required files, then go for full analysis. To do it, return to the main menu, right-click on the disk and choose Analyze again. You also need to select a file system. Choose NTFS, as this is a virtual machine with Windows 10, and start the scan. Then navigate to the folder where the files were stored. Select the files you want to restore, click Recovery, specify the disk and folder where you'd like to save the files, and click Recovery again. When the entire process is over, you will find the, rec uh, the recovered files in the folder that you have chosen. You can see that the program has no difficulty in finding the files that used to be stored on the virtual disk. To make the search easier, all of our programs feature the option to search by file names. Also, you'll be able to preview the file contents. Now let's see how good is this program at recovering files from a Linux virtual machine. Open the disk and choose FastCan to begin with. As you can see, it has found the files, all the data which was stored on the virtual machine disk. The program even managed to find deleted files, and all you have to do is to restore them. Hetman RAID Recovery supports all popular file systems, RAID types, and the majority of hypervisors. If the RAID system in question is damaged, the program will rebuild it automatically and let you retrieve the critical data that you are looking for. When a disk is damaged or service information is erased, uh, the program may have difficulty in rebuilding the RAID automatically. However, you can do it manually with the RAID constructor if you know the properties of this damaged array. Open the constructor, select Manual mode, and fill in all the information you know about this disk array, the RAID type, block order, and size. 
at the disks it used to include. Use the arrows to specify the order and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. Also, you can specify the offset that helps to locate the beginning of the disk. Sometimes the program may have difficulty in identifying it automatically, so you'll have to enter the offset value manually. Usually, if you give correct properties, the newly built RAID system has at least one partition. Expand it to check for folders that you need. If the folders you are looking for are displayed, then you have built the rest of this RAID properly. When you specify all the properties you know, click Add and the array will appear in the Drive Manager. To have the array recovered, the last step is to scan it. Find the files you want to restore, select them and recover to the folder that you choose. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.